welcome everybody. Welcome to Impact Ministry Center. This is Impact Thursday night. We're so glad that y'all are here, whether you're here in person or watching on YouTube. Uh, we just pray that it's a blessing and glad that you are here. If you are watching on YouTube, on the screen, you will see our contact information. We are in Holly Springs, which is just north of Atlanta a little bit. And please reach out to us if you have a testimony of how you've been touched or if you would like one of the ministers or one of our teams to come to you, then just let us know. We'd love to hear from you. So we have a very, very special evening because obviously we have a wonderful worship team here. We're so excited. What a treat. Um, so as a few of y'all know that we're here, I went down to um, a meeting down in Jacksonville and met this couple. And then now through the, the, you know how the Lord works with amazing connections, introduce us to their friends. They've come up from Florida to visit their friends in Atlanta. Just so happens they had their guitars with them and we're coming this evening. So we're so excited to have some live worship. Yes, amen. I second that one, brother. Yes, so um, I'm gonna hand it over to them at this moment. But please, you know, if you wanna sit, if you wanna stand, however it is that you're led to praise the Lord, we encourage you to do it. Thank you so much. How's everybody doing? Okay. Praise the Lord, worship the Lord, have a good night. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm Brody. This is my wife, Debbie. This is Mike and Dina and Jim and Liza. So they're from Florida. We live in Canton and Mike and Dina lives in LJ. So it's like she said, the Lord's got amazing ways that he connects things. So um, how many people here had a very long busy day and they had a lot of stuff on their mind today raise your hand all right well this we're gonna get we're gonna clear our minds of that and open our hearts and let God come in here and move that's what we're gonna do and we're gonna this first song is called hello my name is and I don't know if anybody knows the story of how this song came about but I'll tell a really fast story um, the guy that wrote it's Matthew West well he got an email from a guy and he told him a story and this guy was a star football player in high school uh, and obviously probably had an ego you know when he went into college and got a scholarship a full ride etc cetera, etc cetera. well he caught up in the worldly things when this happened and he started getting addicted to alcohol drugs chasing women all that bad stuff and his life literally went down the tubes and he lost everything and ended up homeless and he turned to the worldly things to try and get rid of his addictions. And they would teach him to say, hello, I think his name was John. He said, hello, my name is John. I'm a recovering addict. That's what they would teach him to say. And he would, he, he would try this and try this. It never worked. It never worked. Well, finally, he got a, somebody, God put somebody in his path, and he ended up at Teen Challenge. Mm -hmm. And he went to Teen Challenge got saved, got filled with the Holy Spirit, got delivered, all of this happened. And the last thing that he did was they taught him, they said, now you're a Christian, you don't say, hello, my name is John, I'm a recovering addict. You say, hello, my name is John, I'm a child of the one true king. Amen. 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 Yeah, Amen. Amen to that. So praise Jesus for that. So yeah. his life, he was restored. His life completely changed, has a wonderful career has a family, um, I mean, just awesome. So that's where this song stemmed from, so. Hello, my name is Regret. I'm pretty sure we have met Every single day of your life I'm the whisper inside That won't let you forget All Here's the important part. Oh, but these are the voices.
The one who makes all things new has proven it's true.
right now, Lord. Touch them, Lord. Just envelop them with your love, I pray. Holy Spirit, we give you this meeting. We, we yes, love Lord. you. Thank you so much for being here with us. And we just hand it all over to you. We've made our plans, but you guide our steps. You guide our steps. We yield completely to you. You have our hearts. You have this meeting. We thank you for all that you're doing. And Brett, I want to pray, pray for you. We're going to have um, Britt's going to come up and do a great teaching for us, and um, I just wanted to pray for him. So if y'all want to stretch out your hands, whatever you're led to pray in your heart, please, absolutely. So, okay. Well, Lord, we thank you for Britt, Lord. We thank you for what a servant heart he has, Lord, and we just ask that you would even um, just touch his lips right now. Anoint his lips, yes. Father God, to bring your word. Holy Spirit, just come and completely cover him. May we see and hear Jesus, Lord. May he follow your every footsteps. May it flow right from your heart, Jesus, and out of his lips. Lord, I ask that you would just open all of the hearts of the people here, that you would open our spiritual ears to hear what you have to say, Lord, that his words would be anointed, Lord, and that it would, it would carry it. And Lord, that we would push back the darkness tonight with his message, Lord, and that it would give us greater revelation of who you are, Lord, and who we are in you, Lord. Lord. And we just praise you for this, Lord, and we thank you for the message that he is bringing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Testing, testing, one, two, three. Can everybody hear me okay? Is that good? Um, I feel like I've already had church. Amen? <laughs> wow, the power of God in this place. I so love the song, He's Jealous for Me. Amen? He truly is jealous for us. Oh, before I get started, one real item of housekeeping, because I think I saw that as I was walking up. Somebody's driving a gray Toyota. That's a four-door Toyota gray. If anybody's driving that, it looks like the trunk got left open. Maybe you hit a key and left it open. So somebody might want to check that. Want to secure our vehicle before we get started. Yeah, Tell you what I'd like to do is I enter into uh, not only, because uh, I feel like this is a time of worship as well, I'd really like to pray for you guys and the congregation. Uh, tonight, uh, really, and I've been struggling with the, the title of this, but the, I could almost form it in a question, are you battle ready? But it's really hearing from God and, uh, and being battle ready, because I think that's the day and time that we're currently living in. So uh, let's, let's open up with prayer. Do you have any follow the Lord right now? I just lift your congregation to you. Come Holy Spirit. Cleanse our hearts, minds, bodies, and souls of all the stuff that's happened today. Lord, just clear it out. Settle within us your spirit, just as you've done in worship. Lord, open their spiritual eyes and ears to hear, Lord. I pray for impartation, Lord. Impartation, Father, Lord, and the anointing to flow, Holy Spirit. Lord, I just pray, Father Lord, that each and every person within my voice will hear your word and what you would have to say, Lord, and then become activated in your service. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. kind of want to start with, uh, by the way, last weekend some of these guys were up from Quick Start. I think some are from Florida, and uh, I think Ella J and some places like that. But so wonderful to have you guys. That worship was just incredible. Yeah. And last weekend, one of the experiences, and I want to share that right now, is uh, we went to several different places. One of the places that I went to was a church. Came up on a lady. And uh, as I approach anyone, I begin to ask the Lord, what is it that you want me to say or show me, Lord? What is it that's on their heart? And there's many times, and that's what a lot of my ministry is, is God showing me someone's heart. And this lady, I looked at her, and I simply said, you have a good heart. God said that you have a good heart. And immediately she broke and started crying. First thing I want to say is so many times, I've probably said that before, or it's not that major of a word. Now, I went on to pray for her, but after I, I got finished, it turns out that she had stair-stepped their five children. And she's responsible for another five children. And whomever the lady, I don't know if it's a sister or whatever, that was living there was pregnant for the six. So under her household, she had responsible of 11 children. And you know what she said to me? She goes, what broke my heart is is nobody ever tells me that I'm good. I'm the armor bearer. Now, she didn't use those terms, but basically she's saying, I'm the armor bearer. I'm the person that has to bring discipline. I'm the person that has to carry the weight. And I saw a piano on her back, and I began to pray for that to release. And I simply want to say that we all can hear from God in just that simple word of you have a good heart. All of us have the ability to do that. And I pray as we go into this tonight, and really, how do we hear from God? We all can minister. God is no respecter of person. Anybody that seeks Him and wants His anointing and His fellowship can have it. So with that, um, let me see if I can... I want to start, and this is really the centerpiece of my whole message tonight. John 16, 33. And to me, folks, this capsulates 
everything that's really going on in our world today. Jesus said this, I have told you these things, what? So that in me you may have peace. So he's already told us ahead of time, guys, in this world you will have trouble. But before he says that, he says what? We can have peace. And I begin to ask the Lord, well, how do I have peace, Father? I have to have fellowship, union, companionship. I have to be able to walk from the Lord and I have to be able to hear from God. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Amen? Amen. Amen. That means that we are overcomers. Amen. <clears throat> I'm going to talk uh, in a couple of metaphors tonight, and I looked up, it's very interesting, I wanted to see what uh, Webster or the dictionary had to say about metaphor. A figure of speech in which a term or phrase is applied to something that is not literally uh, applicable in order to suggest a resemblance. Something used or regarded as being to, re uh, to represent something else. That's a metaphor. <clears throat> The metaphor I kind of want to end into, and I almost titled this the 100 Acre Wood. One of the things that I do when I want to hear from the Lord is I will go into the woods to pray. And a lot of times I'll go deep into the woods. This particular day, I was going to try to get there, and it's at a park. And you have to go through a park to really get back to the back of the woods to go through the trail. That particular day, there was a huge festival going on. And they had all kind of food and all kind of busyness. And, and I even remember they had motorcycles set up. And people were watching. It's nice. I mean, expensive stuff. And people walking around and looking. And nothing wrong with any of that. But I couldn't get to my place of prayer. And the Lord began to speak to me and show me in a metaphor. These are the distractions of the world. You've got to make a choice. And I was hungry that day. Lord, i got to find out some way. I, I know I need to get to the wood. So, long story short, I've been able to find me another place where I could enter into the woods. It was at a, of all things, a church. <laughs> but, um, so, I start to enter into the woods at this church. Well, as I begin to enter into the woods, it looked different because I'm entering into a different place. And I'm going... Whoa, what's going on here? It's, it, it's, it's so different. It was almost even a little bit scary. And the other thing that came up, I don't usually see people at this part of the wood. There was a, a, an elderly lady and a gentleman that comes hiking up more. They were just, you know, and this, lady, this one lady's just, she was visceral. And she approached me and she goes, look out for the ticks. They'll just <laughs> jump out on you. <laughs> And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, what is this about? <laughs> so I get past her, and I'm going, God, what was that? What are you trying to tell me? <laughs> it was still, it was just, you know, bizarre. So I'm standing there, and I've been in here at least I'm dozens of times. But because I entered in a different way, it was a much different, the foliage looked different, it was different. And all of a sudden... All the things start running through, snakes and all kind of stuff start throwing through my mind. And I'm like, Lord, what is going on? He goes, where is the armor? And I said, what? And he goes, you got to put on the whole armor of God. And I don't have that scripture tonight, but it's in Galatians, I believe, chapter 6, where we put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the sh shot ourselves with the shoes of peace. And what? To be able to hold the shield of faith and be able to have the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And he says, then you can enter into whatever the battle is, whatever the arena is, or whatever the situation was. And I began to play. Because see, I even did this, guys. It was real. I'm like, I've been here dozens. I've never got a tick on me. What, what is the deal? But once I prayed and prayed for the whole armor, all of a sudden, it began to settle in. And I began to really look at 
what I was going into and, and what was going on in a much different light. <clears throat> I think that's a, I think that's a, a, a real metaphor for us. In the same trail, I'm going down, and, and this is deep in the woods at this point. I'm three and a half, four miles deep in, and you know, you, you can hear your, you can hear your heartbeat because it's way away from things. And all of a sudden, because see, most of the time when you're walking in the woods, you're walking right in front of you because you've got to be able to see the path. And, and I'm, I'm cool with that because, you know, the Lord said the light, the lamp, you know. But then all of a sudden the Lord began to speak to me and he says, look up. So I start looking up and I'm start looking way out. And all of a sudden I see activity out there. And then am I walking on? I see, man, some big animals. And I'm hoping that it's deer. But <laughs> they're beginning to move. They're beginning to move. And, and, uh, do what? Do what? <laughs> so I'm just like, oh, wow. And there's just all kind of activity. And, and then the, the question comes to me is, is not what is that, but how does the enemy see you? And I'm like, what, Lord? What do you mean by that? And he went on to say, if you don't have the whole armor of God, you're naked and exposed. Now, by the way, God has a sense of humor, and this is what he showed me. I hope this is my next slide. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he seemed to show me. I'm, I, that's, that's, that's someone who's exposed. And I'm, it, I'm out here in the jungle, and the, the enemy, does the enemy see this way? Because here's what the Lord seemed to show me. Is the enemy positioning themselves so they can take a better shot at you? Right? Because that was the first thing is, oh my goodness. You know, is grizzly positioning himself where he can take a better angle at me. Because for the enemy, the element of surprise is everything. So the Lord began to speak to me and he said, but if you have on the whole armor of God, put on the whole armor of God, what if he looks, then what if he sees you this way? And instead of the enemy positioning himself, instead he's scattering and he's running. Amen? More so than that, that's a spiritual, uh, the whole armor of God. It's even talking about the sword of the Spirit. So whichever one that you prefer, this one I kind of see where we're putting on the armor. This right here, I see us as we're walking in the Spirit. And we're letting the enemy know well in advance, I am a child of God, and you need to fear me. How many walk that way? That's what the Lord began to say to me. Britt, which way does the enemy see you? And I was like, wow. That's so powerful. So I'm like, Lord, how do I engage with that? How, how, how do I put on the whole armor of God? And what does it mean when I do that? He seemed to show me Romans 8 and 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword as it is written? For your sake, we face death all, death all day long. We're considered as sheep to the slaughter. No, in all these things, what? We are more than We are overcomers through Jesus Christ. It is the love of Christ that makes us overcomers. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither present nor future or any powers, neither height or, or depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of Christ Jesus and our, and our Lord Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen? See, that's, that's walking with the presence. That's walking with a spiritual armor that the enemy has to take notice. He has to stand up and take notice. And he's asking us, and I submit to you, each day, ask God for the whole armor, because we're in a battle. I don't know, I can say for most of you, certainly for me, 
I'm in a battle right now. I don't have to wait for the future. I'm engaged. <laughs> and not only that, folks, uh, thank so many of you for praying for my father. About a month ago, he was diagnosed with cancer. As, and, and literally, I'm standing in the doctor's office, and they said it's terminal and incurable. I turned to the sink in there, because all of them have a sink, and I thought I was going to throw up. And it was so over, and I'm sitting there going, no, no. That's not who I am, and that's not who we are in Jesus Christ. And I am going to begin to stand and thank so many of you. As an update, when we first started out, there was probably a list of 15 things. Because uh, I love what David Asante said, you don't need a shotgun prayer. You need a rifle, a marksman. I was praying, now we're down to... Maybe one or two things. By the way, the thing that I put out was so many, his kidneys were failing. The doctor said today, they're a totally recovering. Wow. He is, amen. Praise God. It was so touch and go. He was, even, he, he was even losing his mind under the attack of the disease and the medication. And the prognosis is so good. So thank you so much. Matter of fact, I believe he's healed and I know he's healed. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I want to talk about, and this is, I think, the last metaphor that I have, but this is even more so than that because this really happened. This is real. Sometimes, guys, I'm, I'm kind of hard-headed, and uh, sometimes I'm a little bit stubborn. So... Sometimes the Lord really has to show me. Um, this was a normal day of summer, just like it is right now. Very hot. And I was working in my office, and, but I become really agitated, and I had to go outside. And, I go, and it's about 93 degrees, and I said, well, I'll take my dogs out, those kind of things, and I go out. And this is right in my backyard. I've lived there 16 years, by the way. This has never happened. I'm walking out, and about 25 yards away, there's a snake going across, a big snake, going across my yard. And I went, and by the way, my dogs never obey. They obeyed that moment and came straight back in the house, and I got some pretty German Shepherd big dogs. And I don't know why they did then. But I got the shovel, and I said, you know, I've grown up on a farm. I know how to deal with snakes. I'm going to go chop his head off. Right. Man, I went to step to that rascal, and he turned around and popped up. And, and I'm like, oh, my Lord in heaven, it's on. And, <laughs> and I, I got the shovel here, and I was ready to go. And you know when you're intense and the whole your adrenaline's going, my heart was doing like this. I could feel my shirt. I mean, it was on. That rascal faced me, and he, you know, he sticks out his tongue to try to see if he can find you. And I've known snakes and, and animals because I've grown up around them. So I'm sitting there going, well, the only way he can really see me is he feels the vibration of the ground. So I'll be real still so I can get him. So I'm sitting there, still face up, and I just stay real still. All of a sudden, he lays back down, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to be able to get him. And as I, just as I took one step, man, he popped back around again. And I'm like, oh, wow. So what I did with, with all adrenaline, I said I got one chance to hit this deal. I hit a blancing glow, knocked him down, cut his head off. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm sitting there like this, you know. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm like, wonder what kind of snake this is. I think it's our copperhead. So <laughs> I said, I'm going to text my brother. So I'm standing here now. I'm still in the fight position, okay. I'm like this, and I'm texting. And I take my stubble, and I stick it right there, because that's very, very prominent. So I'm texting my brother. And I'm like, dude, what kind of snake is this? And all of a sudden, I heard the voice say, there's another one. Oh, wow. And I, you know, I'm, I'm in the moment. It's intense. And I'm going, there's no way. Your mind's talking to yourself. And I keep texting. Before God, this happened. I keep texting. I send him a picture. By the way, I got pictures to prove this. <laughs> and so I keep texting. And <clears throat> all of a sudden, I hear the voice again. There's another one. 
And it was stronger this time. And I'm like, no way. No way. I'm like, that's just foolish. Snakes don't even run together. So I get through thing and I take my phone, guys, no kidding. I'm standing just like this right here. I take my phone and I stick it right here. And that snake was coming right between my legs before the Lord. And so at that moment, I'm dead to rights. <laughs> I'm going, whoa, I, you know, I'm done, boy. And now here's the other thing is the, the I'm unprotected at this point. The shovel's over here. And all I had to do was listen to the voice. So I'm like, if I move, he's got me. So, and of course, I'm, you know, I'm high stepping up out of there. I jump, grab the shovel before I can blink. The, the snake never saw me and I cut his head clean off. And I'm going, holy, how in the world did that? So I went over there. Now, I have a picnic table real close by this. I didn't sit at the picnic table. I got up on top of the picnic table. <laughs> and I'm, again, I'm like, Lord, show me what you're saying here. And the Father began to speak to me. And he says, Britt. He said, some devils you're going to have to face face to face. And he says, but if you're walking with me, I'll prepare you. I'll have you ready. Because you were ready. And he says, and my son, when I speak to you, you listen. Mm -hmm. Don't doubt. Amen. So many times, I feel the Holy Spirit, so many times we just justify it away. Oh no, that couldn't be. What are the odds of two snakes running together? Why, how in the world, how is that physically possible there's a second one? But God really began to speak to me. And then the other thing is, is He showed me as I was over that snake, Completely exposed shovel here. I had you hidden. You're a child of God. He had it. That snake had me dead to rights. I was just trying to figure out which leg he was going to hit. Mm -hmm. And literally, I was protected. That snake never took its eyes off the other snake. How that's possible? I don't know. So, and I'll tell you there, because again, I'll tell the rest, there's three snakes. The next day, I go out, and I'm like, I've got to go back to the woods. I've got to get over this trauma. And <laughs> it's crazy. I go back in the woods, whole deal, come out the next day, fix to get to my car, and there's a, this wide, this is a walking track where everybody walks. Lo and behold, I come over the horizon, and there's another snake. And he's big. He's all across the whole deal. And I'm walking up on that, and I'm like, well, Lord, I'm listening now. What do you want me to do? <laughs> And, and I promise I heard this. This is not your territory. And you're not prepared. Let this one go by. And I promise you guys, I did a wide circle. I went way around. But I would say this. I would submit the, all those things. God uses everything to speak to us. He really does. If we'll just listen. And I really believe those were three images of the enemy. Sometimes we got to face him, face up. And we have to stand tall, take authority, and defeat him. Other times, God is protecting us, and he is speaking to us, letting us know how to engage the enemy. And then there's other times that we see the enemy, but the Father says, let him go by. And I believe that's a word for somebody tonight. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> I think for some reason I want to read this scripture now. Isaiah 58 and 11. The Lord seemed to give this to me. The Lord will guide, your, guide you always. Amen? He will satisfy your needs in a sun scorched, some uh, versions say drought land, and will strengthen your frame. Some versions say bones. You will strengthen your bones. You will be like a well watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Amen? Amen. I think that speaks volume 
volumes to where we are today. We can have the life of a well water garden. We can have a spring whose waters never fail. But that's with relationship and companionship with the Father. Uh, one of the things that the Lord has shown me, and I, and I pray that all of you do this. What the Lord began to show me in all of these events and travels is, Lord Britt, I want time with you. I want, companion, I, I want companionship with you. I want to meet you in the secret place. Then you will be a well-watered garden. And so I be, I've really begun to dig deeper and ask the Father what He wants me, what He wants to say to me. And so, and this is very personal for me, but I'm going to open this up because I really feel like the Lord showed me to do this. This is my personal journal, journal on, and this is for somebody tonight. Uh, on May 30th, I am not made, it's talking about me, I am not made for ministry or work. It is intimacy with God that I'm made for. I am made in His image for His glory and His pleasure. When I spend time with Him, I am dis to discovering and fulfilling my purpose. Do I need to read that again? I am not made for ministry. There's a mu multitude of you in here that are ministry driven. I'm not made for ministry, nor am I made for work. Adam was not made to take care of the garden. He was made in the image of God to do what? To have fellowship with the Father. It is intimacy with me, says the Lord, that you were created. I am made in His image for His glory and His pleasure. When I spend time with Him, I am discovering and fulfilling my purpose for me. And I almost want to get emotional. So many times I would push my secret place, I'd push it to the side because I had work to do or I had ministry to do. I'd even reach out to people to do ministry. And the Father says, I just want to steal away, steal away, come, come. I've literally seen taking the hand of the Father and saying, just go walk with me in the garden for a moment and spend time with me so I can just, just be. And I'm like, wow, it just so impacted me. I thought that's what I was, I was made to do ministry. No, I was made for His pleasure. So are you. So are every one of you. That's the secret place. That's where you'll hear from the Father. That's where you'll hear. Guys, we have to be able to discern His voice from other voices. The only way we're going to be able to do that is companionship. And then that's when we'll have the whole armor of God. I don't want to uh, argue schematics here. But I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not all into about putting on the armor. It's a presence. It's the ability by which we walk. It's the activation of the Holy Spirit in us. Faith is not something you pick up and you set down. Faith is a being. It's a presence. If we're going to heal and see miracles and have the lame walk, we have to walk in faith and let our faith be built up each and every day, step by, so that we can, by the authority of Jesus Christ, say, yes, you are healed in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Well, I can either... I can find... This is on 7-3. God is calling us to have an acute sense of spiritual healing. With this, you will be able to discern my word in purity. Oh, God. Word in purity. The word of God, thank you, Meredith. The word of God is Jesus. Jesus is the word of God. She's been walking around screaming that for weeks. Is engaged and be in the word of God. 
So interesting, the word impurity. The secret is just to take my voice above all others. The only way to do this is in constant relationship with me. Amen? That's how, so I've been asking God, how do I put on the whole armor of God? How am I prepared to engage the enemy? He says, by spending time with me. On 7-7, seven, seven, you are the living temple of the Holy Spirit. I manifest my presence in your spirit through your inner man. I bring forth understanding. My presence in you releases my light into your life. Amen? That's for everyone. It is about the intimacy of God. I knew I wasn't going to talk very long tonight. I want to really open it up for ministry and prayer. I'll leave you with a couple of thoughts. Engage the battle. I pray for impartation for each one of you. As the deer panteth for water, so does my soul pant for him. I'm praying that the impartation is, is that each one of you from the, will grow a hunger to be intimate with God. Intimacy is into me, seeing into me, seeing into the Father. I pray that each one of you get hunger and more hunger and desire to hear. Then ministry becomes easy. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Your workplace becomes easy. Your burdens become light. That's what he means by my yoke is easy. Right? Amen? I pray that my words provoke thought in your mind and heart. Because what? He said we're going to have trouble. But He also said we can have peace. Because what? He has overcome the world. It's relationship with Him. Engage in the battle. The Lord seemed to tell me two or three things to leave with you. One, let Him be. It was so beautiful this morning in our prayer time, and it was a lot of people in the prayer group this morning. And it talked about the dance with Jesus. It's even a waltz, and it's just dancing with the Father. And what, it, what, the, the, what became forth in the Word is, is you can't get out of step. You can't get out of step with the dance. If you get out of step with the dance, you're exposed. You're just like the caveman. We have to be able to be in the moment with the Father. That's what the dance is about. Because if we start to move in our own authority, just like the stake, I'm exposed. I don't even have a weapon to fight with. But if I'm in dance with Jesus and I'm in unison with Him, Yes, then I'm not only hidden, I have the full armor of Christ on. But we have to be so careful to follow His lead. So many times, what? We want to lead. We take our own authority. We have to remember that it is Jesus Christ that pierces, that He goes before us. Let Him and allow Him to go before us. The other thing is, is, it, it, as I would say, it is about relationship with Him and relationship with others. So goes this, so goes this. Because what does it say? Look at your fruit. What is your fruit? What is your relationships? Are you having problems with the relationships? Get in the secret place and talk to the Father. Amen? Because He will, what? Make our path smooth. That's what it says in Psalm 23. He, let, he allows me to lay down in green pastures and by still waters because He provides the peace because He's an overcomer. The only way I can engage that is I have to know that. I have to experience that. If I don't experience that, I can't have what They're just words on a page. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank You for this Word that's come forth tonight, Lord. And I just pray that the very Word of God would penetrate the hearts of men, women, and children. Lord, I know You have shown me that You want intimacy with the, the very image You created because You've created us in Your image, Father. And You desire, You long for companionship and relationship with us. Lord, help us and prepare us to be able to engage the, the, the battle with your Spirit upon us, Lord. I pray for the helmet of salvation, and that is clarity and purity and the Word of God to penetrate and infiltrate our minds, Lord. Put your helmet of salvation on our Father right now in Jesus' name, Lord, and put the breastplate of righteousness on our heart, Father Lord, so that we would move with purity and integrity, Lord, and a heart of flesh, so that we can hear your word, Father. Put the word of God in us, Lord. Lord, put the belt of truth around us so that we can walk in truth and speak peace and life among our brethren. Lord, I pray right now for the shot us with the shoes of peace, Lord. Peace, joy, happiness, all the fruits of the Spirit, Lord, so that truly, when we engage life with others, they will truly be attracted to us, Father, by the peace and the love and the joy that we walk in, so that they would look and say, truly, there is something different about them. Not that they see us, Lord, make us transparent, but make, a, make them hungry for the light that they see in us. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray right now that you put the shield of faith on us, Lord, so as the devil fires his fiery darts, that they would hit and bounce off and that our faith would rise up and that we would walk upon scorpions and we will cut off the heads of the snakes that try to so torment us in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray right now that we pick up the sword of the Spirit, which is the living Word of God, and that each person would engage in your Word and let it get deep within their spirit so they can speak it out as they engage life and engage battle on the front line. For God, these people are your front line people, Lord. I pray of anointing, impartation, and activation upon them right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brother King. Great job. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let me make sure I'm turned. Can we hear me now? Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Anytime we talk about Ephesians 6, uh, the armor of God, it, you know, it really stirs up the enemy. That, does that scare anybody? I'm going to play some more music because we got all these musical people right on the front row. We got to make sure they're happy. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, thank you, Lord. Lord. The Lord is saying that you're on holy ground. He's here tonight to heal you, to set you free. This is a new beginning, a new start. The new flame is getting ready to be fired over you. The, the new things are about you. Did I not say to ask and seek and I would hear you? This is a night that you've been waiting for. Some of you have been crying out for decades on things and the prayers have not been answered. But tonight, it's a new night. A new season that's coming in. I've heard your prayers. I know your hearts. I will not let you go. Even though the storms, you can see them coming. Stand with me and we will weather this storm. We will do more than weather. We'll bring many into the kingdom. Did not I prepare you for such a time as this? As we talked about the armor, I've armored you with my spirit. I've given you the power of my, the God, the, the power of God in 2 Peter chapter 1. You've got the divine presence of God in you. What does that mean? That creative ability is in you to speak 
creation. God said, speak over your family, over your things, that the positive things. Quit speaking in the negative stuff. We're creating new things now, even tonight. The Lord's stirring me. I, to be honest with you, I was laying on a bench over here about 5 o'clock and Britt came and prayed for her. I was getting ready to go, go home. But I said, Satan, I'm not going home. You're going to have to bring an ambulance up here to get me tonight because there's something happening here tonight. And I need it too. I'm tired of playing. I'm tired of just doing the things. I'm ready for change. So, Lord, we proclaim that over each one here tonight. We're not going to play this anymore. We're real. We're going to die for the kingdom if that's what we need to do, Lord. So we come and lay ourselves before you on the altar. Touch us tonight, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I know if there's things in my life or the people here, the people watching, I trust you to deliver us, to set us free. Because it's really not good to put armor over flesh. We want to get rid of these flesh patterns and put the holy armor over our spirit man. So cleanse us. Make us pure and holy because of what you did. What well, it says in 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And what? Cleanse us. Lord, I sense a cleansing presence tonight. These are mature believers. Most of the people in the room know you well, Lord. But things try to come back. The enemies like the snakes. I sense there's some snakes crawling between your legs tonight trying to come back in and to touch you, to bite you, to sting you. But we take authority over those things in the name of Jesus. Any spirit that's not the Holy Spirit must flee from this place tonight. Hallelujah. Off of each person here. No, no spirit but the Holy Spirit's welcome. In the Jesus' name, the blood of Jesus is flowing in the room over each one of you. He's stirring us up. Some of you need some joy. Lord, I thank you for the joy coming up, Father. I speak joy. Lord, I need some joy. Fill us up. Some joy and peace, Lord. Great message by Brent, Father. Thank you that we know who we are. And we can hear your word, Father. Tune our ears, Father. Everyone in the room, everyone watching, we need a tune-up. Open our spiritual ears that we can hear what you're saying. That still, small voice that you speak, Lord. Lord, they said that you would speak to us. Let us be obedient. Some of us try to reason with you, Lord. Lord, we're here tonight to obey. To obey your word, Lord. I know you have some things to do here tonight. So people to stir up, to people to encourage, to people to raise up and push out into the ministries. He doesn't just let us come together to, just to come together. He comes, actually we come because he's here. Amen. How many need a touch tonight? Everybody in the room, actually. <laughs> but God's going to raise some prophets. He's going to raise up some teachers, some evangelists, some maybe some music people. Is that okay? The ones in the room know that you've been here before. You can move in the gifts of the Spirit. If I don't know you, please don't move any kind of gift, if, even if you're more mature than I am. That's just, I just don't know you, so that's wholeness. We don't want to we don't mess around with the Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord. We don't want to grieve you, Holy Spirit. Who? Lord, I thank you. Thank you that you're touching us. Lord, go deep. Let the people feel you. Lord, I know we we walk by faith. Hebrews 11. Father, that's who we are. We walk by faith and obedience. But Lord, I pray tonight that as your spirit moves in and out of this place, that it cleanses us, it makes us whole, it touches our bodies. God's in the healing business. Not because of us, because of what his son did on the cross. He did it a long time ago for us. So I thank you, Lord, that we can appropriate, we can believe, we can trust, we can know that you heal us. 
Thank you, Lord. There's somebody watching on YouTube. There's a lady that's pregnant, and they've told, the, told you to have an abortion because the baby's not right. In Jesus' name, I proclaim that baby healed and whole. It's, it's going to be a little boy. It's going to be a little boy, and I believe you're going to name him Joshua. Either Joshua or Caleb, but either one's going to be good. Thank you, Lord. Receive that, young lady. In Jesus' name. I want to pray for a few people, and I know OJ, I, f I feel OJ, and any of, mm, boy, any of the other people. Thank you, Lord. Somebody have any stomach problems? Anybody? Stand up if you're having stomach problems. If you're standing up, sit no. Lord, I thank you, Father, that you, you, you touch, touch my wife too. She's not here, but I know she has stomach problems. Anybody watching, Father, I thank you that you can bring a word and people can be healed. I thank you that you're healing in the stomach. Both of these are yes. two to three or who if three. You're healing the stomachs, Father. In Jesus' name, you told me to proclaim healing over them. I'm being obedient, Lord, to your word. I'm proclaiming healing in each, each one of these three or four. I thank you, Father, for before the next 24 hours. You know, healing's a process usually, to be honest with you. Miracles happen instantly. Most time, miracles are creative. If you need a creative miracle, something needs to be brought back that's dead. We speak that too in your stomach. It's okay if we take a moment here to pray, isn't it? Y'all are praying, people. I'm going to pray for y'all. Are y'all together? Thank you, Father. Well, wait a minute. Pray. Lord, I thank you. Touch them, Lord. Send your word, Lord. Thank you, Lord. They re thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Ooh, thank you, Lord. I'm going to move around here a minute. Oh, is it okay if I pray for y'all? Are you together? Yeah, we are. 31 years. Wow. Thank you, Lord. I was going to say that. He's, Thank you, Father. You're holding hands already. I was going to tell you. So God's already. Thank you, Father. You know, there's going to be. God's going to. There's somebody in your life. I don't know if it's you or some that needs a healing. There's some healing. So one of y'all need healing, or somebody right close to you that needs a healing. Lots. Huh? Lots. Lots. Okay. I sense. I just sense the peace and healing of God flowing over you. Matter of fact, it's flowing back over y'all too. There's a healing presence flowing. You don't have to feel it. Do you need anybody in your, anybody in your families? Hey there. <laughs> There's healing right here. Thank you, Father. Lord, I thank you for the, the power of your word. Lord, I'm just a man, but you said that we have authority in your name, so I take authority. And I thank you for healing the bodies, healing the emotions, healing everything that needs to be healed. Resurrect your life in them. Lord, I speak life. Holy life. I cast you away, Satan. You have no right. You must go to the dry places never to come back. There's healing and wholeness. There's resurrection here in this lady. There's resurrection power. Can I touch your hand? Thank you, Father. There's an anointing, double portion, Father. Lord, I thank you that she's going to take these hands and minister to many people of healing in her family first in many places. She might already do that. Lord, I pray for the gifts of the Holy Spirit to flow in her. I sense this, the gift of faith and the gifts of the Spirit of faith that's going to well up in you. When you walk in a room, you're going to have the faith of God. People will be drawn to you like a magnet, and you'll start proclaiming healing in the room. Yes, yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. And young man, I'll call you, it's probably younger than me. So, <laughs> God said, I'm going to send you around the world again. It's time to go. It's time to go. Do you want to go? Go. In Jesus' name, there's a new anointing of freshness over you. There's a freshness over you. He said, I've, I've purified, I've brought you through the fire. I've, uh, people have tried to, you've tried to, the, uh, any, the enemy's done John 10, 10 on you. The thief comes to steal, steal, and destroy in your life. But what does the B part say? I'm coming to give you life. Abundant life, overflowing life. It's just going to keep flowing like a river. 
This life is going to be in you because it's going to flow out of you in your hands onto other people. It's not about you. Both of y'all know that. Y'all have died to self. It's not about y'all anymore. It's about my kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. He said, proclaim that over yourself and over everyone you pray because God's doing some. OJ, you have something? Father, we thank you. And we come tonight stirring up the anointing. We stir up the gift that is in you tonight. As God, your God, restore, repair. Yes. I, I heard him say, I'm repairing things in your hearts. I'm restoring the joy of your salvation. I'm restoring the peace to your soul. Yes. I'm drawing you back to the place of intimacy. Mm -hmm. Do not look at man, for man has and will continue to disappoint you. Look at me, says God, and love them through me. For no great is your rewards in heaven. Great is your rewards in heaven. Great is your rewards in heaven. I have taken notice of the things you have done over the years. Do not carry the scars anymore. For tonight is your night of healing. I came to repair, to restore you to the fullness in me, my children, whom I called, whom I chose. Receive all that I have for you, for the journey is not over. He says a new beginning. And as Ken was praying for you and prophesying over you, the Spirit of the Lord poured himself in you afresh. And he says, walk in the power yes, Lord. that I've given you this night. Yes. Do not look back, for tonight is your night of freedom. You have been set free. You have been made whole. Arise, take up your mat, and walk. Yes. Run. Do my will, fulfill my purpose, says the Lord. Train, equip, and prepare the people for the work I've called them to do. Get off the sideline, get in the game, for it's not about you, says the Lord. It's about glorifying my son. You got something? <clears throat> Frank, you're the spiritual leader. And I pray right now, Father, in Jesus' name. Frank, this message was for you, as it was for many others, but specifically for you. The Father is asking you to come up, my son. Come up into the secret place so that I can whisper to you. I see plateaus. My son, you've hit a plateau. Come up to the next plateau. That is intimacy with me. I have many secrets to give you. I have many things to say. I want to just talk and walk and discuss the things of God with you. My son, step out. Walk out. Step out with me. And as OJ was praying, I saw fresh water right now in Jesus' name. Not just a little bit. But Frank, you were standing under a waterfall of water with your hands lifted up. And it was freedom. And fresh anointing, fresh water falling right now in Jesus' name. The Lord says, come sup with me. Step into the secret place and receive the anointing and the water that will fall on you in Jesus' name. Amen. You getting some? I don't even know what I've got, but I do know that the Lord is... Just there's a healing virtue released over you. And even the situations that Ken was speaking about, I just saw many in your family that even when you're walking about and you're speaking the word, that that healing virtue will go. And they will, there will be many that in your family that you will hear 
of their freedom and their deliverance and their deep wounded spirits being healed. Uh, sometimes they may not even know why they are in the situation that they're in, but there is a deep wound within them that God will heal and they will be free and you can speak it, but there's a healing virtue over you that when you walk, where you walk, you are bringing that healing virtue. I saw the Lord kept blowing on you, and then what Ken spoke, and then the different ones would speak over you. I just kept seeing him blowing over you. So it's like that freshness that he's like setting your sails to go, and he yes, will, he's just blowing on those sails Thank to you, go. Lord. So it won't be a work. It's just staying in him, like we said, just supping with him. Amen. Hey man, I, you can sit it over there. Uh, you've had enough over here, y'all. All these people over here are upset because they're not getting words. <laughs> they're not really. I, are y'all? That's the holy place over there anyway. So there you. I want to. What is your name? Are you really Samson? Said so he's going to strengthen you in these times to do great things not physical strength it's going to be spiritual strength I don't I think you understand the calling on your life I think you know the. he's not going to need to cut your hair though so <laughs> are you ready to I don't y'all don't y'all know each other us three do you know are y'all all friends or that's his dad over here that's your dad what's your name at the D. You, what's your name begin with? D? No. <laughs> no. Are y'all together? Thank you, Father. Can I pray for you? You sure? Father. Hmm. Lord, I thank you for a man of God. He said he, he doesn't look at our hearts because of our age. He looks at the maturity in us because of how we follow him. And God said, I'm pleased with the way you've come after me. I know you haven't been perfect. You're not perfect now, but I know your heart. It is a heart like David's. Even though you make mistakes, I still honor your heart, and I'm going to take you to higher places. He said, it's been hard because I've had you on the potter's wheel. But I'm calling you up higher so you can see. You've been on the ground too long. I'm taking you up to the high places. Haven't you noticed I've been letting you climb higher? It's been harder. It's been, it's been exercising new spiritual muscles to get you to the high point. And it's real soon. If it hadn't already happened, I'm going to give you a vision. I'm going to give you a dream of the things ahead for yourself and many others. He said, I'm even going to put things in your heart that you can write down. I don't know if you like to write, but he said, I'm going to let you write things pure things, holy things, because you've had a lot of things said and written about you that wasn't true. But God's even church people. But God said, I'm healing you emotionally. You have healing your mind, all the things in your emotions, I'm healing you. You've cried out for a lot. You couldn't sleep at times, but God said, I'm going to give you peace and sleep. It's like the roots in your life are going deep spiritually. You're getting to the tap root where the nourishment's going to come up and you're going to blossom and bloom and go and do the things of God because I trust you with my things now, said the Lord. You've used them wrong in the past, but now I'm fine-tuning you. I'm sharpening the sword for a two-edged sword that you'll be able to cut those things off in front of you and go. They've held you up in the past, but now I'm marking the trail. You don't even have to cut them out of the way. I'm opening the, the doors. You can't miss his will if your heart stays where it is. Just walk with me daily and I'll let you walk down the path. It's a path of righteousness and wholeness. People will come to you and you speak a word, pray a word, preach a word, teach a word, prophesy. Lord, a double portion of anointing on the 1 Corinthians 12, all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But Lord, dip him in 1 Corinthians 13 first. Let him love. Dip him in love, Father. Dip him in love for his, his generation. Let him go and speak forth revelation. Is this making any sense? And dad, God said he's not through with you yet. He's had to shake you a few times. I'm talking to me too. <laughs> but he's, your, your heart's good. That's where he got his heart. He said, I'm taking you deeper too. This is not a season to give up. 
I wrote a thing last week. It's, you know, God's not giving us senior citizens retirement. He's, he's, he's not retiring us. He's refiring us. It's, it's not a time to retire. It's a time to refire. Why does he bring us all to this age and, and say it's time for you to retire? He, he's made us mature. We don't let all the little garbage bother us. Well, sometimes we do. But we don't let most of it bother us. So he's refiring you. Not that you're old. You're not that old. He said, I'm not finished with you. Even though a lot of people in your past have finished with you. And it hurt you deeply. It brought pain in your heart. But God said, I'm healing your heart today. I'm healing your heart. Break all that off, Lord. Break all the stuff. I got more, but I, I think that's enough right now for you. God said, I'm, you're a flower. You've, I've planted you in my garden, and you've grown up like a flower. But God said, I'm, I'm, I'm replanting you. Your pot's too small now. I don't mean that like you're... <laughs> you're going to put you in a bigger place, okay? I have to watch what I say. James cuts everything I say out. He's moving you to a different, different area so you can grow. Your giftings are so great. Are you... You're smart. You're a very smart lady. I don't know what kind of education you got, but you're smart. People come to you because you have a lot of, not just smart, you've got a lot of wisdom for your age. God said, I'm, I'm giving you wisdom because you've got a pure heart. Your family did well raising you, and you've, you're a, a lovely young lady, but God said, I'm raising, y'all are, I need to be in this section. Y'all, God's raising you up. But there's been pain. And there'll be more. This is the world we live in. There's pain in this world. Britt talked about that. But he said, I'm going to take you through. I'm, I've got you in an oasis now. An oasis because you need some rest. You just need to relax and just not have to please other people. You're a people pleaser. I'm a people pleaser. He said, rest in me. Don't, you don't have to make people happy. I want to make you happy, says the Lord. I want to make you happy because you're my daughter. You're my favorite one. You like all that? Okay, good. Come over here. Claire, the Lord was just showing me that you're a seer. And you don't always understand what you're seeing, but just seek Him. You see mighty things. You can discern when something's of the Lord and when something's not of the Lord. You can discern the, the spirits that are on people um, you can even discern when people you've known, when people were speaking something of God, and then it switches. And it's not, it's okay. It's not, it's not judgmental. The Lord's given you this to be able to know and to see and discern what's going on. So those times when it seems confusing a little bit, just go to him. Ask him, Holy Spirit, what are you trying to show me here? Lead me here. Sharpen me in this because it's for a reason. Sometimes he just wants you to pray in it. Sometimes he just wants you to know. But you've got a great gift. Yes, Lord. Wow. We are staying in that section. we got to move out of that section over here. The word I heard for you, my brother. God says, tell him he was crucified with Christ. Mm. He was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, he lives. Yet not him. But it's I, the Holy Spirit, that lives on the inside of him. And the life you now live in this flesh, says the Lord, is by faith in my Holy Son, Jesus. Why will you put your faith in him? Because he loved you. He loved you. Even before you was born, he loved you because he saw you. Before you came into existence. And when he died, he died for you. Yes. He gave his life for you. So that you will be a part of my family. Tell him he has been redeemed by this blood. He's been cleansed by this blood. And he's an overcomer by this blood. Put your confidence in Christ. Lean not to your own understanding. But in all of your ways acknowledge me. For it is I who will direct your path. Submit to my word, says the Lord. Yield to the Holy Spirit. Yield to the Holy Spirit. 
For he and he alone will lead you into all truth. It is he who takes from what is mine and make it known unto you. Trouble not yourself over the cares of this world. Surrender. For you are in the hour you must surrender. Surrender your will to me. It's your will I want. It's you I want, says the Lord. Yield to me and watch and see what I do in and through you. Amen. Tell him this. I don't need your ability, says the Lord. I don't need your mind. I need you. I need you to surrender. Stop striving with me, says God, and yield because I have so much in store for you. Your eyes have not seen. Your ears have not heard. It has not entered into your heart that that I have for you and that that was prophesied over you must come to pass. But you must bow your knee and you must surrender to me and I will glorify myself through you, says the Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, I have a word for this lady right here and the Lord just said I'm not going to pass you by I didn't forget you I'm not going to pass by you I have not forgotten you I know every single desire that I, that I have put into your heart they're not even your desires those are the desires I gave you and they're for you and only you because you are my daughter and I love you and I will never forget you, never. And today is the day, he says, that I am beginning to stir up everything that I have placed within you and within your heart. It is going to start today. Even when you sleep, I will begin to speak to you and remind you of the words I have spoken over your life. Every single word that I have spoken will yes. come true. Because he says, Thank my word will never return void. It will accomplish exactly what I send it to do. And it begins today, he says, it's today. Embrace it, he says, receive it, because it is for you, it is for you. I will never walk by you and just keep on walking. And today, just so you know, I'm stopping right here, right now, and saying, my daughter, today is the day, today is the day. And Lord, we just thank you for all those things you've put within her heart, all the prophecies, all the words that were spoken over her, that today you begin to stir, that you're blowing fresh winds upon those words right now and bringing them back to life, refreshing her with them, oh God, and stirring them into this big fire within her. Father, we thank you. We thank you. When she wakes up, she will be on fire on fire with your promises and your plans yes, and with a new love and a new sense of you that she yes, has Lord. never experienced before because it's for her it's in her you have given it to her you have sealed it in her heart thank you lord thank you father the lord had me praying for your back not only your physical back but he's healing your physical back. He had me pray complete healing and restoration of your physical back for everything to come into perfect alignment. But he's also strengthening your spiritual back, your spiritual spine. He's giving you a boldness. You've been crying out, but he's had to heal your heart. He's been working on your heart. And you know it. You've been going through heart surgery, but you've been obedient. You've been letting those things go. He's been healing your heart completely restoring those relationships, even working on your family from a distance because you've given them to him and he is so pleased with you. But not only have you received a physical healing tonight, daughter, but you have received a spiritual healing and a spiritual strengthening and a boldness. So Lord, we thank you for the boldness. We thank you for the boldness because you are sending her into places, Lord, that she has not been before, that she will speak out. She is the light going into the darkness, Lord, and she will speak out. She will even speak a word of truth, Lord, and the enemy will flee because it cannot stand in the light. 
We thank you, Lord, that she is going to go and set the captives free, Lord, that she will be breaking the chains of the enemy off of people, Lord. You have given her a sweet spirit and a loving heart to be able to reach those, Lord, that are broken, those that the world has cast to the side, for she has had a burden for them for many years, a burden that you've laid on her, Lord, that you've been preparing her, and now that she's completely yielded her heart to you, Lord, you have cleansed it and you have healed it so that you have been prepared her to send her out, and we thank you, Lord. We thank you and we just ask for the divine connections that she needs, Lord, to open up, to send her out into the ministry. Tonight is a night that you are launched into your ministry, daughter. This is a night for you to remember. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. T, if you, we usually try to leave, end about nine o'clock but I believe the Lord wants us to minister so if you need to leave around the, leave kind of real quiet because we're going to probably go after nine just want to let you know I want to play one more song and then we're going to minister some more I've got to get these ministers up here the, I want to pray for some more people again if you have to leave leave quietly anybody that prophesies here or gives word Anybody have anything for the people on the front row here? I'm going to do this a little different time. Yeah, who's got faith enough to come speak a word to some of these people up here? Hey, that's your, come running. That's a song, isn't it? Come running. <laughs> Ye de maharote mi isa raba de ma. Le de korama neme ke do. Raba to koraman de ko shede baharote. Ye man do koraba te diriro raba hate. Yes a raba donande. Ye man do o raba to usede. Come, Shedirota, Haye. Come, Shekorabato Ote. Come, says the Lord, Rebato Otsete. Ramando O Rabate, Dirio Rabate, Dirota, Haye. That that you have asked God for tonight is yours. For thou have desired a more intimate place in Him. And God says, Tell Him to come. There's no veil, there's no door. But your faith will take you before the very throne of God and the night God is releasing upon you boldness, boldness to come. Oh, shit. God says, don't come to me with your head bowed down like you're unworthy to be in my presence. He says, I give you the authority through my son. Tell him this. When he comes before me, he comes clothed in my son. Did I not say approach my throne room of grace with boldness? Boldness, I say. Stop feeling so unworthy. Speak your heart to me, says the Lord. I'm a big God. You know, even Jeremiah told me he was angry with me. I didn't get mad at Jeremiah, says the Lord. I responded to him. I don't fret when my people share their darkest things with me. You've been frustrated. Because you've seen so much and you cried out in your heart, Lord, why? He says, I've given you the why. Because I want you to draw close to me to get the answer to the why. As you stand before me in this hour, know this day my body is more strong today than ever before. And you will ask why. Because I'm still there. I'm still in her. I'm still moving, says the Lord. And yes, says God, revival is really coming. And tell him he's going to play a significant role in it. 
tell him he shall play a role in what I do in this hour. That's why you must come before the throne room of grace. Because I heard him say, behold, I, the Lord, do a new thing. But before I do it, I reveal it to my son. You are his son. He's taking yes. you by the hands. And he said, I shall lead you. I shall lead you in the path of righteousness. You shall go forth and lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover, says the Lord. And you, you will teach my word. Is my word. Hunger for the word. Thirst for the word. Fall in love with the word. Because it's there you must train them in the way they should go. Don't leave them. Don't abandon them. But teach them my word. Show them the truths of my word. Yes. As you yield to me, revelation of knowledge and revelation of wisdom will come unto you. And when you open up the scriptures, I, the Holy Spirit, will bring them alive. And I will illuminate myself in my word. And you shall see Jesus. And you shall go forth and share the truths from my word that I've given you, says the Lord. Amen. That was... You got some, that was for everybody in the room if you want it. Anybody else need that? Somebody else? You can get the words of God. They flow from right here. Wherever, they'll flow over to you if you want them. I'll say, flow over here, Lord. Go ahead. You got something? I got a, I don't know that I understand the vision, but I got a vision for the whole group. <clears throat> and it was, I know it was in heaven. And all of a sudden, the, the spotlight came on as you guys were playing, and all of heaven stopped, and you guys began to play. And I saw a violinist, and I saw, what is the instrument that stands up and he plays like this? Cello. Cello? Cello was there, too. I don't know, ooh, I feel the Holy Spirit. I don't know what that represents or who that is. But you begin to play. And the angels in heaven, as you guys played, begin to dance in unison. And the Father would say, thank you, Lord. You play not for man, but you play for me as an incense and an offering to me. And the Lord would say, for I am well pleased. Continue to worship and play music for me and my kingdom, says the Lord. Amen. Thank you. The only thing I saw, and Brett just, when he was saying the instruments of the strings, as I did keep hearing the Lord say, they, they pull on my heart strings. When they play, they pull at my heart. They pull at my heart. So, Lord, I thank you that they will continue to play as unto you and that they touch your heart. And in that, I just almost see like where you go, it'll bring a dividing line. A dividing line that's, that God is setting up in the body. And Lord, I thank you. I don't know exactly how he wants to use that, but that music is going to bring a true dividing line in the body. And there will be a truth that prevails from your music. And, unto him amen i see you going into many uh avenues and churches and he's going to use your music to bring a dividing line i amen. almost see um some leaders having some heart checks from the dividing line amen it is a fearful thing to come into the presence of the lord but it's also a wonderful thing but truth needs to prevail and his heart is going to be used through your music in the days ahead to bring and bring and prevail truth in the body of Christ um, Amen and I felt like the Lord said whoa that you will give a word you will be giving a word and you will have boldness. You will have boldness. 
And it may seem awkward at first, my son, but trust me. I've got shoes for you to step into that you haven't worn before. But they will be well fitted. Amen. They will be comfortable because they are my shoes. And he puts them on your feet. Know that my heart is big for you. Play unto me. Amen. One of y'all, somebody in this group is going to write music, or do you do write music? That's who I got to keep, start writing. There's heavenly tunes that he's going to put. It's going to wake you up. Wait till you hear what she's getting ready to get. <laughs> and I don't know any of them. God, Lord, I thank you for the new music that will set people on fire, that will bring revival wherever they go. It will bring a, a touch of the Spirit. Lord, let her wake up in the midnight hour, have a, a dream that has the song. And God said it for you, young man, that he's, he's changing chapters in your book. Matter of fact, he's, he's changing books. There's a big change happening in your life. It's a good thing. You've been in the old book for too long. He said, throw that behind you. He said, better things are ahead, greater things. Because you stayed in that back book too long, he said, launch out. He's getting ready to cut everything behind you out anyway. He's going to set you free, freer than you can even imagine. Not because of you, because of what you're going to do for other people. God's already set you free of a lot of stuff in your past. And you're... And you appreciate that. I see your heart that weeps. God said, I, I wept for you, my son, because you're, you're one of my favorites because your heart cries out. Your heart is so sensitive that people have taken advantage of you. People, church people. And God said, I'm healing your heart. I let you feel this pain because that's the pain I felt on the cross. Now you understand salvation. Now you understand the heart, the 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 heartbeat that I have for the world. I don't hate people. I love them. I want them to come. I'm, I'm calling them into the kingdom now. He said, even preach that. Go forth in his name and his power. In Jesus' name. That made sense, didn't it? Anybody else? That other, uh, this, he just gave me a confirmation that the, uh, the revival was spoken that you would bring revival. And that's what he just told me when I sat down. He said, that's part of that dividing line. Yes. And there will be a dividing line in the body of Christ for true revival to come. This is what I heard the Lord say. He says, in the last days, I should raise up pastors out of, out of my own heart. <laughs> and my brother, I don't know if you pastor or not, but I heard him say, a pastor's heart you do have. And you've been wondering why you weep and you weep for the sheep. Others go out the souls to save them, but you say, God, how can we feed them? How can we restore them? How can we repair them? Even marriages, your heart cries out that God will repair the family. That's why your heart is broken, as the man of God said. It weeps. As God weeps. It's one thing to save people. It's another thing to restore them. I call you. As a restorer of my people. Yes. No you won't do it says God. But the anointing on your life will do it. And people have put you in a box. In a category. And they said what you could and could not do. And, and, and they want to disqualify you. But tell them this. Whom I qualify. No man can disqualify. Whom I call. I anoint. Yes. I have anointed you. Yes. Now all you have to do. Says God. Is yield to the calling. And stop trying to figure it out. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts, says the Lord. I'll call you to bring healing to the body of Christ. 
Tell him he has an anointing to heal the broken heart. Yes. Man of God, God has anointed you to heal the broken hearts. As you pray for people, as you minister to people, you there's an anointing going to come upon you. And I heard this. It's going to be a quick work in their hearts. God says you're going to pray for marriages and he's going to put them back together. You're going to pray for children and families. And God says I'm going to bring them back together. For I have anointed you, says God, to bring things together. Yield to the spirit. Let him lead you. Believe what I've spoken to you. And watch and see. If I don't manifest my glory, says the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I have a testimony, too. I, I, when I came in here, I've been sick for about three days, my stomach. And I know every time God tried to use me, the enemy always attacked me in my stomach. So I, I, I was in the restroom, and I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I'm under attack again. And I heard the Spirit say, don't worry. And then when I came out here, Ken said, God wants to uh, heal somebody in their stomach. And I knew that was me. And when they prayed for me, I felt the power of God heal me. So let me tell you, when we trust God, trust and I had to believe it yeah. now, and I had to receive it. But God did it. And I thank God for people being sensitive to his voice. In Jesus Amen. Name. Thank you, Lord. I want to say, I'm, I hate, I, well, I don't hate to keep you late. I want to pray for this couple over here because I know he... He drives a truck, and he might not be around our way in a while. I don't even know if he's, he might be in the spirit on the Lord's day. Thank you, Father. I want to pray for this family back here, too. Y'all all together, aren't you? Are y'all all family? I mean, which one's the kids? <laughs> no, we can have it. We can be funny here. The Lord's funny. He can erase this off the thing anyway. I know you're a truck driver. But God said, I'm, I'm calling you to be an intercessor. Have I not given you time to, to roll down the road and you listen to music? But God said, I'm calling you to go deeper. Amen. That you can intercede for the people that I love. You intercede for the people that you love, but intercede for the people I love. You run across all different kind of peoples in your job that some of them you don't like, some of them you don't, don't understand, but God said, they're my people. I love them. He said, I'm going to take you deeper. Deeper than you can even imagine. You're pretty deep now, but God said, I'm taking you deeper because your prayers reach the altar. They change things. They've changed your marriage. They've changed, they're getting ready to change your finances. God said, I'm, I'm going to take you out of debt because you've been obedient in the little things. He said, I'm going to resurrect life. You've been crying out, both of you. So he said, be patient because the enemy will attack you even stronger now. But if you'll stand on my word and stand with the faith of God, trust me. He said, I will relieve you of everything. I'll, miracles will happen because you've been faithful. You've been faithful, both of you. And many people have come against you, family especially, and said bad things about you. Don't forget your family, but forgive your family. God said, check your list. Forgive everybody that's harmed you. Set them free. They're the only person that's bothered is you. Set all the family, all the friends, all the churches. God said, I'm freeing you. And when you get the money, pay it all off. And then God said, I'm going to let you go around the country together and, and spread my gospel. Take your Jesus, the Jesus 18-wheeler on the road. Matter of fact, I see you doing mission work. God's called you to missions too. Brings the money into you and go to Africa, to South America. You have a heart to do that, both of you. If you don't, you're going to have one. That's enough. Anybody have anything for this young? We're running overtime tonight. Oh. From early in the meeting. Hold on a minute. There you go. I just, the Lord kept telling me, look over there at that couple. And he didn't ever give me a word. So I just want to say, he wanted this word to come to you tonight. Amen. And that's that's all I, I just could see the Lord saying this over and Amen. over. He wants to do something with this couple tonight. So Amen. receive it. Sandra, God, God's healing you too. God's healing you. 
God's healing your family, healing you because of your faithfulness. Well, who do you? For the brother, the truck driver. The Lord sees your heart. I saw your heart. And he said to confirm for you, everything he spoke is because of your tender heart. You have a tender, tender heart, my brother. I, the Lord showed me your heart, and a normal heart is this big. Yours is three times as big as that. And he says, continue continue to walk before me with your tender heart, and I will give you the desires of your heart. He might want you to go to the cardiologist. Huh? <laughs> Get that heart checked. Uh, thank you, Lord. Lord. Lord's all over him. I'm going to get right there next to him because I can feel it. Thank you, Father. I'm just, uh, I'm just uh, sensing the Lord is saying. He's not saying anything on that one. I'm not saying anything on that one. But there's just uh, there's a power of agreement um, in your intercession with you and your, with you and your wife. Um, it's just the Lord wants to remind you that there is a power, the power of agreement between you and your wife in intercession when you come into agreement one can put a thousand to flight two can put ten thousand to flight and that that power is is pushes back the 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 uh, the darkness and that um, uh, just just establishes uh, I just want to say establishes a wall it establishes a, a protective barrier around you so that's just uh, anyway bless you you have to leave, leave quietly because the Spirit is really sensitive now. Thank you, Lord. But don't leave. The Lord just wants you to know that He's seen all those wounds, all of those that have hurt you, that He was with you and that He's seen that. And that even though you have a broken heart, there are still a few things to forgive. And he just wants you to hand them over to him. You have forgiven so many already. He just wants you to let the rest go. He's still doing a mighty work in your heart. Just, just pray. That's Please pray for him. There's, there's a lot more going on there than you know. Pray for him. Thank you, Father. This is what we come here for, to, for people to be set free of everything. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you. Touch your own. Can I touch you? Touch your Father. Thank you, 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 Father. We. might pray for somebody else because I know the Lord's ministering right there. I want to pray for this family back here. Is that okay? Thank you, Father. What is your name? Philip. Angel? And these are the three little angels? How, how old are you? You're 20? You're 15? I'm not. I don't get that ages right. I'm just kidding. Thank you, Father. Y'all all love the Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Father. If anybody gets anything for these people, you getting anything? Thank you, Father. Phil. Trying to be cautious right here because there's a lot going on. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Good. Did you say you were 14, 15? Are you smart? You're pretty smart. She's pretty smart, isn't she? You're real smart. He's, he's kind of like me. I'm pretty smart. Hey, what are you laughing at? Do you want everything God wants in your life? You've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. And you know, I, I know, but God's going to rebaptize you over the next seven days because the, the things that are coming against you in school, uh, in friendships, 
the things that are coming against you, God's going to rebaptize you in power. He said, I'm going to set things free. I'm going to protect you. There's a protection. There's angels. Your guardian angel is going to protect you and, and keep you safe now. God said, I, I see where you, what you're going through, and I'm going to take care of you. You don't have to worry about anything. You're in a good family. You're in a good situation, but I'm going to protect you. He said, I'm breaking off that spirit of fear. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. I break that spirit off of you, never to come back in Jesus' name. Lord, I, I pray power into her, faith into her. Send her. The reason Satan's coming at you strong, you've got a calling on your life. God's going to take you around the world. I don't know exactly what he's going to do, but there's a calling on your life. It might, I don't know, are you musical? Do you sing or... Yeah, got it. That, uh, God's got a, a, there's a, that's why he's attacking you. He wants to stop your voice because you've got a voice for his kingdom for the young people. You'll, you'll have word songs for the young generation coming that will bring many into the kingdom. That's why it's so hard. I would thank God. Just thank God because there's an anointing on you as, as a young lady that older people would yearn for. But there's a power that goes with it. There's a, an attack that goes, but there's no fear in it. God is bigger. He made Satan. You know, you don't have to feel somebody. You got a God that made the Satan. You don't have to worry about Satan. Most of these are emotions. I'm a very emotional person. Most of them are emotions. He's training you. He's training you to know when these are emotions. Now, some emotions are good emotions. But Satan uses fear and torment to come at you at night. And it makes you scared. But now God's going to clean that up and give you yes, sweet Lord. sleep. Jesus. Will you receive that? Yes. Yes, Lord. Yeah, you've already received it. Is that okay, Mother? And I want to break off generational curses off your family. Oh, yes, I break it off. And I, I don't, you probably don't have any. But, you, but somebody in your past has had things in their life. There's been drug addiction, alcohol, or some kind of perversion. It might have been three or four generations, but we break that off. Yes, Lord. We break that off of anybody, off of them, off their family, off their children. Your gen I don't know if your family in the back. This ge your generation, your kids are going to serve God. It hadn't always been the truth in the past. I don't know. I might be missing that. But you're going to be the first ones to really push out for God. I was the first one in my family that pushed out. So these two, two young people right here, have got, your kids have got anointing on. Y'all must be prayer warriors. I don't know what you do. You should be. You're a millionaire. Yeah. <laughs> You're a businessman. Yeah, God's you, you got an uh, entrepreneur's anointing on you. Amen. Strong one yes. to make money. Yes. Yes. Just remember where the money comes from when it starts coming. Right. It might be there already, but He's getting ready to open the windows of heaven yes. for you, because you you are a man He can trust. But He's going to give you people to give around the world, and you don't even need to. Know. You're the type of person that gives money. And nobody knows you give money. That's why He trusts you. It's okay for God to trust you. Because you, other people trust you too. You've got a leadership anointing on you big time. I, I wish you went to my son's church because we need some leaders. And God said, you're a, a Mary. You're a Mary that sit at my feet. The reason he's so strong is because of your prayers. Y'all, God put y'all together. Nobody did. God put y'all together. Because you're going to change lives, change destinies, change callings. And your kids are going to be covered. You don't have to worry. You don't have to fret about your kids. Right. He said, God's going to take care of them. He's got the guardian angels. I break any kind of fear in Jesus' name. Other people have words, so I'm going to shut up here. No, you, you hit most of it. What's your name? What's your name? <laughs> what? Angel. It's beautiful. I would say this. It's spoken to earlier tonight. One praise is puts a thousand to ten thousand. I'm going to say it this way. If you're praying together, continue to pray. If you're not, start. That is the protection of your family. And what he just said is I saw, I saw some fear back over there for your children. And the Lord says, give it to him. Right. You are a, you are absolutely, I see you as the watchman on the wall for you and your family. And the Lord says, take that burden and lay it before him. It's not yours, my daughter. Trust me, says the Father. Come deep with me. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be in happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. I have given you these blessings, out. and I will protect them. All I ask you to do is walk with me. He said, be foolish. with me. 
Lay your burdens at Abraham my feet. Abraham was foolish with Sarah. For my yoke is Moses easy and foolish. my burden is light. Just Be set free right now in Jesus' name. To change the world. Lord, I lift up angel right now. Touch her, I'm Father, God with the authority of Jesus Christ. Thing. Peace that passes all understanding. Been, Let your heart be not troubled and God's do not be afraid. In Jesus, name. in Jesus' name. For I have overcome the world, free, says the Lord. And I Jesus am with you, touch your, touch and I am for you. God's healing you. And if I'm with you, you, no man can stand against you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Overtime now. Overtime. Young lady, God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And the spirit of the Lord is coming upon you. And God, your God, is empowering you with boldness to stand in a generation for what is right, what is holy, what is good, and what is just. Be strong and be of good courage, for I am with you, says your God. Know this day, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Tell her this, I'm not a God that is far away, but I am a God that is near to her. Yes, you love your parents, says God, but I'm greater than your parents. For what they can't do, I can. When they're not around, know this day, I am your protection. I am your strength. Yes. I am your covering. I am your way maker. I love you. Yes. Walk in my love. Receive the power of my love. A woman of faith you are. And the gift you have that you are afraid of is the gift of the discerning of spirits. Yes. Even the dreams you see sometimes, not all of them are of the enemy. But right now you don't know how to walk in the depths of the things that you see. But God has given you the ability to see in the realm of the spirit. Yes, Lord. You see things on people, you meet people, and it, it, it terrifies you. And, and you're wondering, why am I seeing these things? Because God is showing them. Now he must train you in how to walk in these things. Yes. It's a gift that comes from the Holy Spirit. God has given it to you as a gift. You, don't, you see things in your friends. It's like when you're around people. It's like you know sometimes what they're going through and they only have to tell you. What you're going to begin to do is just pray for them. And as you pray for them, you're going to say, can I pray for you? You're going to have to tell them what you, you saw. And as you begin to pray, the Spirit of the Lord is going to come upon you in power. Yes. And the Holy Spirit is going to flow in and through you. Yes, and Lord. God is going to touch those people and make them whole in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, you are different. Yes, you are different. Yes, you are different. But I heard him say, be proud of it. Right. You don't have to be ashamed. Of whom I've called you to be. Amen. Because when you stand in your rightful boldness, says the Lord, people will draw to you. Because they want what you have. Amen. You don't know that. But they do. Thank you, Lord. You stand, I will draw, says the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And I heard the Lord say to you, I have healed you this day. Yes. The old wounds of the past have been made whole, says yes. the Lord. <laughs> yes, says God, even the things from your childhood has been healed. Yes, says God, the brokenness, I mended that, says God. I, I poured myself into you tonight. I poured my glory into you tonight. I poured my power into you tonight. I poured my love into you tonight. God says, my love, my love, my love. Receive my love. Receive my love. It's love you have longed for. It's love you have sought. Tonight, I have come to fill you with love. Yes, Lord. Yes. Amen.
The love of Jesus is not coming upon you, it's flowing out of you. For the spirit of love has been stirred up in you tonight. Not only will you know the depth, the width, the breadth of God's love for you, but in your life you will demonstrate a new measure of love for others. Yes. Love your enemies. Love your enemies. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Bless those who wrongfully accuse you. And your way will be made plain, says the Lord. Amen. For tell of this, it is I who fight your battles. Yes. It is I who sustain you. So stop fighting and surrender. Love says God, and watch and see what I do. For then they will say, we should not have touched her because the anointing of God is upon her and her God is with her. Yes. Amen. Amen. I think, I think we're going to, we're not going to shut, we're, we're going to shut part of this down if you need prayer. We'll stay around, so. You know, I'm going to play one more song, but I'm going to say, pray, Lord, I thank you for everything you've done. Lord, you've done a work in people's lives, all of our lives tonight. So we seal that by the Holy Spirit. Satan, you have no right to come and destroy this. You have no grounds to destroy. We cast you out away from all these people. Anything was spoken of the, through the Lord, through the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, that you seal it now in Jesus' name. Thank you. Come back next week.